We are going to take a look at 18GA. Uh, I have Mark Derrick. Uh, this is something I put together uh, in this box. I have 18AL and 18GA. Um, Callendale's already covered 18AL. Uh, I've been on a bit of a train kick lately, so I thought I would do this. Um, I put a set of 1889 together for me and one for him, so I'm not going to cover that. I'll let him do that. Um, he'll do a much better job. But so I have uh, 18J here set up. I don't have a ton of room. We don't need any advertising. Um, I don't have a ton of room, so I think I'm just going to do four players. I thought about doing three and just dealing the privates out. Uh, but I think I will actually do a real auction. Um, I'm not great with auction solitaire, but I feel like there's a there's a right way to do it. Um, so we'll just play it out right. Um, I'll try to explain kind of an overview of the game for people who don't know it. Um, I know this is something different for me, um, so maybe something different for. Uh, people watching these. So I think I'll do four players, just one in each corner. Uh, we'll get the money set up. I'm going to use poker chips. Um, but I think the track we're going to kind of cluster on the privates. Will, or I mean the corporations will keep clustered. So I'll finish setting up uh, and we'll get started with the privates. We're back and everyone has their money. I'll put this here. So um, I did want to take a look at, for people who haven't played an 18xx game before, um, kind of do an overview. Basically the game is broken down into a stock round and an operation operating round. The stock round you buy and sell stocks, um, trying to either gain control of companies, uh, buy stock in those companies to make money, or sell those stocks to drive that price down. Uh, and then operating, you're laying tiles uh, and running trains trying to make a profit. And we'll dive into it a little bit deeper. Um, it, it, these games have a decent amount of rules, uh, but they're actually not very difficult to play mechanically. Um, I think to play them well, there's a finesse that maybe I'm not necessarily familiar enough with yet. Uh, I've played 18 AL twice. Um, I'm playing, I played it twice face to face. I'm playing online. Um, right now, I've played 1830 uh, kind of halfway online. But, uh, Dan, Dan Oster on Board Game Geek did one of these for 18 uh, AL, and I took his format and made one for 18 GA. I made one for 1899 uh, that I should actually probably post um, because the. All these games share a similar set of rules, uh, so this just kind of talks about different, uh, slight differences in the game-specific stuff. Uh, so before we do anything, we're going to auction off these private companies. Uh, in this game, in 18 AL, they don't exist on the board. In these, they do. So it blocks while the while the private is privately held. It blocks blocks out a hex and I need to answer my phone. All right, uh, so each private company here has a par value, which is the minimum it can sell for and an income that it earns every turn. Uh, these eventually can be sold to the corporations and then that corporation will get that income until they close when uh, a five train is bought. Let's right there. They also, except the cheapest one here, have a special power that let you do something. Uh, and usually that's used when they're operated or owned by a corporation. So the way this auction works is you can bid on something or you can buy the cheapest. If you buy the cheapest thing, then if there's a bid here, that, uh, that auction would take place with people who've already bid on it. We have five companies here and four players. So how it works is you have to pay, when you bid on it, you have to pay 
five dollars higher than than the par so this is going to work this way and we'll put their marker on it this guy up here uh, doesn't necessarily want to spend 150 although that's pretty valuable getting a company off the ground and the cog starts in Macon um, but he's actually just going to do 45 on the Midland So here's the thing, this guy could buy this, which then would give this company to yellow for that bid, and then it would allow this player to bid to buy this at par, which would allow, which would then get this guy for this, uh, leaving yellow back with the opportunity to buy this for 150. White doesn't necessarily want that to happen and kind of wants to get his hands on Midland. So he'll just bid there. Not seeing anything he really wants to do. Orange will bid on this. Now, it's up to Red again. He's pretty happy with getting this. Let's see, it would go. Would still leave the impetus on yellow to get this, uh, but putting yellow down quite a bit of money after what happens here, maybe that's worth it. <clears throat> so he'll pay 20 to get that. That causes this auction to happen. Yellow seeing this opportunity passes and White gets a Midland. Orange gets this. Red gets this one. And it comes back to yellow, who will buy it for 150. So that's the waterfall action, auction that happens. Uh, and that type of auction is pretty typical throughout all of these games. Uh, and actually, Maybe there should have been more fighting. Uh, the general consensus with five players, each is worth um, slightly over their par value to pay for. Um, I guess as much as double, I guess. But Red tipped that off. Red was happy with this. Um, and Yellow didn't want to spend too much money fighting for that. So I think that played out about right. I usually don't see that going too long, but I don't play with crazy expert players. Um, yellow did the last thing, so I think now it's up to white to start the stock round. Um, he's going to count his money and see what company he wants to start. So having it be his turn first, uh, he gets first dibs. Uh, however, he has $390. You need six shares of a company to float that company, which means it goes into operation. He is $10 short of being able to open at a $70 par value. Um, so he could hold off for a turn. And he will get that from operating which might actually be worth it. So he has his eyes on the GA, because uh, it's pretty close up here to Greenville. And with his owning a Midland, he gets a free tile lay there. And Savannah is pretty far away from anything happening. The interesting with this map, the interesting thing with this map is our tracks um, in 18 AL, which we can pull out just for comparison. So you can see a lot of 
these starting cities I already have track on them or even just the big bigger towns bigger I guess those are all cities but so Montgomery is a starting hex but uh, it's adjacent to some track uh, Phoenix City there so we can see there's some some track on the board there's also quite a few off-board hexes which oh geez I'm tearing my board up here which George is lacking uh, the only three red areas um, which is pretty interesting to me but I guess there is ocean right here and then South Carolina um, so he's actually gonna pass We'll do it here. I, I should have counted this money. I wasn't thinking. Uh, we'll come back after this and talk about who has done what and why. So everyone ended up passing. They overspent in the auction. Uh, they probably could have worked together to float something and maybe that was the right choice, but that didn't happen. Uh, Orange here floated W and A. So the justification for that was to try to make some money and then maybe start something off down here at a higher par value uh, to use the Waycross station there. So that ends the stock round, number one. Um, and I need to put something there. But So now we move into an operating round. The par value was set at 55 there. Uh, so now, first what happens is the privates pay out. Hee hee hee. So everyone's gonna make money from that. Maybe not necessarily should be doing this on here. That's okay. It's 15. So let's look at how the operating run works. First, what you do is you put your, your yeah. So he's gonna lay a tile down first and the first tile you lay has to be in your home station. So Hotlanta here can face any of these three ways. And I think he's going to face it like that and then you put your home station out which is free. So now when you're running trains it, it'll run from the station out. And it's interesting that Atlanta these don't, these don't connect. Um, maybe they maybe they do. It's just not shown that way. Um, so that's the tile lay, station lay. So now what would happen is you run a train. However, you can't make a one city connection, and uh, he also doesn't have a train on WA, WNA. So there are no dividends to pay. So the stock price is going to go to the left because it didn't operate. If, or if because it didn't operate, if it paid out, it would have gone to the right there. Uh, and now it has to. Oh, it floats with five hundred and fifty dollars. So close. So it has its starting treasury, and now it has to own. It has to buy a train and it has to buy a two train there's trains available and then you can see what's coming up next it has to buy a two train that's gonna pay a hundred dollars for that so we're done with operating round number one and we'll move into stock round number two we're at the end of the stock round uh, GA floated as well as cog uh, white up here miscalculated he needed 40 more dollars not 10 or 60 more dollars, not 10. Uh, oh, yeah, they only paid 55 for that. Uh, so yellow here took pity and bought the extra one to get that off the ground. Also helped out uh, red to get, to get cog off the ground.